Chapter 4, The Midnight Desert. Uh-oh. Is the message not gonna make it? What the hell is that? I see some elves come fly. Well, so much for the Dragon Queen. Finding out. Pretty cool. So I didn't know elves could fly. I don't know who this is, but it seems reasonable. And it's sort of a relief that the elves have conflicting interests as well. I mean, we have Aravos who just is his own entity. But like the humans, right? Like with Ezrin and his court advisors and Viren and all these people who want different things, I'm sure that exists among the elves as well. I'm sure there's a bunch of them that want war with the humans. <laughs> fine. I'm fine. This is fine. You look fine. So, um, yesterday must have been a hard day for you. Not really. Back when I was a kid, my family used to do this thing called big feelings time. Sounds terrible. Then you say them out loud, and the other person says they hear your feelings, and it makes you feel good. Humans are so weird. The human abuse continues. I'm gonna give you a big feeling on the side of your head. <laughs> okay. Callum's heart is in the right place. He has a heart of gold. And I think reading between the lines, what he's really saying is, I'm here for you, which is nice. But you gotta give her some space. She knows Callum's there for her. She'll talk when she wants to. Sometimes I feel like the best thing you can do as a friend is keep it light. Because she's going through enough turmoil already as it is without his assistance. Also, sometimes I feel like when you are airing your issues, when you're talking about your problems, you wanna do it with someone who you feel is above them, you know? Like someone who, who is stable and that you can rely on. Because if they're stable and they're really healthy, they're, they're a grounding stone for your fluctuating emotions. I think one of Callum's driving forces here is him feeling anxious about Rayla feeling anxious. And so there's sort of nowhere you can go but into this feedback loop of anxiety. He's gotta be cool Callum. Cool, fun Callum. I feel like that's that's what I look for when I'm in those states. I look, I look for people who are like grounded. I love how despite all his pressures, Ezrin is just still like the pure-hearted kid he is, loving his pets. Look at that face. This guy, how many times is he gonna visit? <laughs> just go do your evil. Here is your ultimatum. If you will not stand with us, then you stand in our way. Mm-hmm. If you're not with us, you're against us. That old chestnut. I've already told you, Catullus will not wage war on Zadia. Then tomorrow at dawn, Three armies will wage war on Catullus. Ooh, damn. What are you doing? Preparing you for greatness. Be still. I feel like this just crossed some key boundaries. Varen's all in. This is all in at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just shoot your silk in my eye. No problem. Erebos is a friend to all humans, apparently, according to the scrolls. That's what friendship means, you know? You're not a real friend unless you've silked someone's eye. <laughs> if you haven't silked someone's eye with your insect walkie-talkie, are you really their friend? I think this is a true psychological thing. This applies in sales. The goal in sales is you get someone to make a couple easy yeses, like you get them to agree a couple times. That primes them to agree to the bigger things later, and I feel like that's what's happening with Viren. Erebos has gradually been leading Viren into a state where he just can't say no. I mean, Viren kind of started off accepting a lot of Erebos' stuff. Like, he drank that juice, that potion. He cut himself. But now, Viren is just completely capitulated. Someone's coming. <laughs> Not helping, but good effort. Oh, wow. My name is Naimi Salari Nikatia. I'm not gonna remember that. Nyx. Nyx, okay. I am an emissary of the Dragon Queen. She received your message. No, no, no. More lies. And you must be... <laughs> I'm an Earth Blood Elf! No, no. Message said you'd be traveling with a human companion. Oh, does it now? What just happened? That was, that was incredible. I was the human. <laughs> yeah, no one knew that. I have been authorized by the Dragon Queen to fly him directly home. That's not gonna good, happen. Good, good. Really, it's too smart. How do you plan to cross the Midnight Desert? Do we look stupid? <laughs> Callum. <laughs> the Dragon Queen is dying, and you would waste a week when I can take you straight across in two days. Follow me. Interesting. The coming battle won't be easy, but we will triumph. But that's but not satisfactory cost? for him too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How many? Thousands. Probably tens of thousands. That's no triumph. That's yeah, tough. 
Honestly, the, the guy, whatever his name is, the guy who is declaring war on them, is absurd. Because what is to be gained by attacking Catalis? If his ultimate goal is to attack Zadia, it doesn't make sense to fight a, a brutal war and lose soldiers. To be that motivated by bitterness is insane. She'll get us to the central oasis by sundown, and we'll spend the night. Thanks, Bait. That helps. He's like a cat. All of these are sons and daughters. Sisters, brothers, friends. They're real people, Bait. <laughs> It's a big burden for bait to carry. King Ezran, forgive me. There may be a way to prevent this bloodshed. You can save these lives. What's the catch? I knew Ezran would be a great king. And I think the fact that he's having these challenges is not a reflection on, on his leadership. I think the fact that he cares so much is a really good sign. And I don't think that he's done anything wrong. I think that this situation has sort of been imposed on him by other people who are bad actors. He's blaming himself, but there's a big difference between being at fault for something and being responsible for something. I think a lot of times when people experience adversity, they look to blame themselves. Like, how did I let this happen? As I've said before, I think this tendency to self-blame, part of it is a desire to feel like you have some control over the situation. Because it's terrifying that outside forces can just impose terribleness on, on you in life, right? It just things happen. But there's a big difference between being at fault for something, being to blame for something, and being responsible for something. Ezrin is not to blame for this. He's just responsible for how he reacts to it from here on out. And that might seem minor, but I think that's an important distinction, not only for Ezrin, but just more generally. Because blaming yourself for the negative actions of others it just gets in your way. You start to second guess yourself on your own decisions beyond a point that is healthy, I think. Because from where I'm standing, Ezrin has made really good choices, really honest choices. And so the question is not, how did I let this happen? What's wrong with me? But what do I do now? You know, how do I continue acting honestly? Leave her alone. I'm fine, Callum. Like I already told you. What happened? Her foot's stuck in a hole. How convenient. Don't touch my stuff. Why are you staring at that thing? Something so strangely familiar. Boomerang? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Callum in another life. Alternate universe. Was that whole scene just for that joke? <laughs> just for the Avatar reference? We're down here. Oh, your majesty. How things change and how they stay the same. If anything happens, I mean... Something might happen, and I need you to take care of Bait. I am honored and humbled. You understand what he needs? An infinite supply of jelly tarts and uh, understanding and love? Just like all of us. There's the oasis. It's not much, but it's a safe haven from soul fangs and the husks. How does it keep them out? Surrounded by obelisks that create a circle of protection. Seems excessive, but cool. Gets really cold here at night, so we'll need these. I wasn't sure uh, if you guys needed two blankets or just <laughs> one. <laughs> two. Yeah, two. Because uh, if there was just one, then... <laughs> two. Uh-huh. Interesting. That is so gross. It is ready. Open your eye. It's awful. And now you can see me. Cool. And I can better serve you. Yeah, I'm not sure that was worth it. I think hearing was probably good enough without my eye being silked. <laughs> Rayla, did you say something? You okay? Rayla, it's okay. Get away from me! Give her a little space, man. No, 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 don't. Oh, she left the dragon. They left the dragon. King Ezrin, are you sure? There will be no going back. What is he turning himself over to the army? This guy. Plotting and scheming. There will be no attack at dawn. <sighs> yeah, he's turning it's himself done. in. Take him. This guy. As much as this sucks, and as much as it's probably the wrong choice practically, you gotta admire the principle. You know, willing to risk your own neck to do what you think is right and to save people. There are a lot of other things Ezrin could have done to save his own skin at the cost of other lives, so. Regardless of how things turn out, I admire this a great deal. I don't think most people would be willing to risk their own necks for what they thought was right. Like, it's easy to talk about right and wrong when, you know, you don't have skin in the game. This is the long, sad walk music. This is the same music when they walked Harrow to his elf moon battle. Moon elf battle. 
Are they gonna switch him with Viren? But that's gonna have the opposite of the intended effect, because Viren's just gonna go to war. Oh no. I'm so sorry it's come to this. No, you're not. No, you're not, yeah. He's just gonna go no, back on his word. I'm not. Oh, very direct. Can no one, like, notice that his eye's messed up? Get some silk in your eye. That sucks, because they're just gonna undo everything Ezra just agreed to. But you know, like, as much as I don't think it's gonna turn out the way he wants it to turn out, respect for having the guts. Respect for, like, putting it on his own shoulders like that. There's nowhere I belong now. That's not true, Rayla. You're going through a hard time, that's all. That's not all. I'm not good enough, and I never will be. Shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're too good to feel this bad about yourself. And you're ten times funnier than any human I know. <laughs> See? You're smart and fast and beautiful. Not what I was expecting. You said beautiful. I wasn't saying those things so you would... Did this scene make anyone else uncomfortable? Like I said, I feel like Callum's heart is definitely in the right place, but there's just something weird about how aggressive he is with it. And I feel like Rayla was swayed by that a little bit too easily, if that makes sense. Like, he just called her beautiful and she was beside herself. Is that all it takes? I think the most natural part of that scene was Callum fumbling the ball five yards from the goal line. <laughs> just foot and mouth. Foot and mouth, as usual. We will never speak of this again. Do you understand? Of course, of course, yeah, of course I do. No, I mean never. We walk away and this never happened. Perfect. You blew it. Yeah. <gasps> oh no! The dragon. Did she take the desert creature too? The big thing? The giraffe? Maybe the end credits will clear it up. <laughs> Boomerang Callum! There you go. Yeah, I feel like season three is really delivering. It's like one episode to the next. Things happen and there's always surprises and twists and things like that. Ezrin went from ruler to prisoner, switching with Viren in one episode, which is probably gonna nullify all his intentions for avoiding conflict with Xavia. Because the whole thing was Viren's engineering. And then you have Zim gone, which is interesting. We don't know what this elf lady's goals are. It's not necessarily to get the dragon back to, her, to his mother, right? Then you got Callum Rayla awkwardness, which made me deeply uncomfortable. If that was the goal, they did a great job. But yeah, story-wise, it gets crazier and crazier. And now you have Viren on the throne, which really means Aravos on the throne, right? Before the video ends, I have to give a very special shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon this week. For those of you who don't know, by now, both Dragon Prince and Full Metal Alchemist are one week ahead on Patreon. If you guys are interested in that, be sure to check it out. Otherwise, a huge thank you goes to all my Patreon supporters. It goes a huge way. It makes this possible. This week, a very special shout out to Darius and Chris. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to all my patrons. And thanks to everybody watching for all the continued support. See you guys very soon for the next episode. Thank you.